Hello, hello, hello everyone. Welcome. It is Friday, February 28th, 2020. I am in Houston, Texas, actually, uh, in a, uh, a subdivision um, or a whatever you call this, a, uh, what do we call area. It? an area called Champions. And I was actually here yesterday and it's a little bit warmer, a little bit breezier actually today. And I'm here with my good friend, Cindy Range also known as Lola Casanova. Yeah, oh, I got outed. On Facebook. I got outed. So this is the real Lola <laughs> Casanova. And she's got a cowboy hat on. Why do you have a cowboy hat on today? No, sir, what day is it? It's Friday. No, no, it's Go Texan Day. Go Texan Day. Go Texan Day, yes. So what is Texan Day? You have to be a Houston Texan football fan? No, 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 because we started way before then. But it is, um, it is the start of the Houston rodeo, livestock and rodeo season, three weeks long, where uh, you have trail riders come in, you've got barbecue cook-off, chili cook-off. barbecue. Got, yeah, you love I barbecue. I love barbecue. You do. <laughs> Especially brisket. Yeah, mm. yeah. I haven't had brisket since Monday. Since Monday, yeah. Oh gosh, yeah. I'm, I'm getting hungry already. I need to have brisket like twice a week, at least in uh, Texas, so. <laughs> get it in your blood. Yes. So, um, I have never been to the rodeo. Have you ever been to the rodeo? Yeah. What yep. do they do at the rodeo? Oh, let's see. They have uh, bull, bronking, horses, cow. They've got the little uh, place where the kids can go in and touch them. They have uh, uh, all the livestock show. They've got a carnival. Do they, they have, have chiropractors? <laughs> for all probably the backs for that all get the bulls, you know they probably yes. do they <laughs> probably do they have little kids that run and they go and do the calf scramble oh they do yes know. and they that can win fun. prizes from this so there's all these little calves that go out and these little guys go and okay. uh, do that they rope the little cows uh yeah all kinds they do the uh chuck wagon races Chuck wagon. I remember that cute little commercial with the chuck wagon and the dog running yes, after it, and then it yes. disappeared, and the dog smacks yeah, into it. Yeah, the... they've got the clowns <laughs> when the bulls are out, and they jump into the barrels and uh, to keep the bulls away from the cowboys. Uh, yeah. So, did you grow up in Texas? Native. I'm a native Texan, native Houstonian. Okay. All right. So you've been through some things here, like like some hurricanes. Yes, several. Several hurricanes. And you were talking about yesterday that whenever there's a hurricane, it always snows like after. There's a snow that comes following after. Later, a couple months, of months, months later. Months later, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. So we're always looking forward to the snow after devastation. Yes. Yeah. But there's no snow here right now because it's going to be 70 degrees today. Yeah. Ah. Uh. <laughs> this is your spring. It I is. <laughs> I'd much rather be here than Indiana because I think they had some snow up there. So thank you, God, for. Uh, for ministry and yes. being able to help people. So, so talk about uh, your life growing up. What was life like? Ah, nice and peaceful. Chaotic. <laughs> I grew up in a Latino family. Mm. Chaotic. We yell. We scream when we want to get our point across. <laughs> really? Yelling you and run. screaming. Yes. No peace. No, no peace. No peace. <laughs> no peace. Uh, yeah. So. Um, Unfortunately, grew up with a, an alcoholic father. Okay. His mother died when uh, he was 15. Wow. Dad that wasn't really involved. And so, um, just a lot of issues. He, he wasn't supervised properly, uh -huh. let's say. And then a mom who, um, Jezebel mom, had uh -huh. a Jezebel mother who had a Jezebel mother. Yes. Uh, and so, uh, generations of that. But, um, Things were talked about with words, you know, okay. words and words. And did they have animation with the arms? A lot of animation. That's why <laughs> my husband said, don't use your arms today, Cindy. You, you tend to talk with your arms going all over the place. So I'm, I'm sitting here holding them. But, uh, you can use your arms. That's okay. I <laughs> do. Like, I don't want to knock you and then don't, you go. Yeah, don't fall go, backwards. Don't fall and backwards. And she said that there might be alligators that are in this water. It's possible. So please watch out. If you see anything, can you yeah. yell or do <laughs> if something? If you see a thing that looks like a log that's coming at us and yeah. it opens a mouth up, then say something. Although we won't hear you, but maybe we can see you saying alligator behind you. <laughs> yeah. You can actually write Make that. it quick. Yes. Uh, but um, yeah, a lot of dysfunction. Okay. I saw it in my grandparents. Mm -hmm. Saw it in my parents. Mm -hmm. I saw it in some of my uncles and aunts. A lot of dysfunction where love was shown differently. Okay. Like wrong. Okay. <laughs> so love was shown the opposite way of what love is. Yes. 
Yes. So that's probably keep, yeah. gives you a little bit of tension and not much peace then in your your own life when you're growing up like that. Yeah, uh, you know, one of the things that I've learned that the Lord has shown me about honoring your father and your mother, it does, that, he said it doesn't have a comma or parentheses, it says unless, mm -hmm. unless they s spoke negatively toward you, unless they, you know, uh, tend to take uh, punishment in a different way, unless, it's, it's none of it. Okay. He's the one who put them there. Yep. He knew. Yeah. But we are supposed to honor. And that's hard. Yes. Because as children, we we see but then in our thoughts we start making inner vows. And inner vows are the things that we don't recognize as capturing us. They start capturing us. Uh-huh. Because and we don't know that those inner vows are coming in because voices may be speaking to us about, see how bad they are? Oh, I'm not going to be like that. Yeah. Or see how marriage is, which I did. Boy, I came against marriage because of what I saw. I'm like, if that's what marriage is, yeah. I want no part of it. Yeah. None. Yes. And uh, so you start making these inner vows. And uh, they begin to pop up when you get older. And that's what happened with my first marriage. Those inner vows against marriage. Uh -huh. The same things I witnessed at home started happening in that marriage. So do you see some triggers that would trigger you or trigger your, your spouse, your husband? And yeah. Yeah. Don't control me. Yeah. I don't, you, you don't tell me what to do. Yeah. You don't, you don't own me. Yeah. You don't own me. <laughs> I yeah. remember saying that like, you don't own me, so you don't get to tell me what to do. I am a grown up uh -huh. and I can make my own decisions and. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And um, at, at what point did uh, you enter or go to church? I mean, were you brought up uh, in the church or what part of that in your life? <laughs> I grew up Catholic, but again, even though it was so chaotic at home, we'd go, you had to be good. Everybody had to put that facade <laughs> on. Uh huh. And then as soon as you got back in the car, all chaos would break out again. Yes. So you had to pretend, <laughs> yes. you had to be, pretend, and then be. Uh -huh. And so, and unfortunately, in the Catholic Church that I was brought up in, they didn't talk about things. That... They didn't talk about demons and getting delivered? No. Really? None of that. Well, I'm shocked. <laughs> Me too. My gosh. I found out the same thing. What were those priests thinking? I don't know. <laughs> what were they thinking? Um, so, uh, around 1920, I began to back away. From the church okay because um you don't want to be fake i didn't it, yeah i saw i saw i knew that there was a god who was supposed to be good uh-huh but i didn't see good yeah and every time now and then when they wanted to invoke jesus or god in a conversation i'm like what uh-huh because what you're talking about and who you're trying to bring in they don't connect yeah there's no connection yeah. and so it left me questioning but I, I always knew in the depths of my being there was a good God uh, because I remember in, in a lot of depth and pain of pain I would cry to him uh -huh. and say I know I know you're real yeah please help me yeah please help me and um, One day I wanted to take my life. Okay. And, um, and I just felt like I was in a pit and I could never come out. And at that time, I want to say my son was three. Uh -huh. And um, and you could hear the enemy. I could and now, now I know so clear that the enemy was speaking to me that my life was worthless. Yeah. That there was no meaning to it. Uh -huh. uh, why don't you go ahead and kill yourself? Uh -huh. And I had had a breakdown. And the, my doctor had prescribed me at the time Valium. Okay. And um, and I was such in a, a pit of dis depression. Uh -huh. And I, I and so I I started hearing. I'm like, you're right. You're right. You know, I have no value. Why am I even here? You know, maybe this 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 is all wrong. I, I I'm not supposed to be here. Yeah. And I was in the bathroom. I'm about to consume all the pills that had just been given to me. Wow. And the voice of the Lord said, "Stop." Wow. Do not do that. And was speaking about if you do that he wins 
Wow. That was great that you could hear because yeah. oftentimes the enemy is so strong. It's like, this is the way out. This is going to give you the peace that you want. And, yeah. Yeah. And I immediately put the um, pills in the toilet and I flushed it. Wow. And not even thinking. My son was in the room. There was going to be no one to find me. He, wow. I, what, he would have woken up and, and I don't know what would have happened. I can only assume yeah. seeing his mom and not waking her up. And then how long would it have been before someone would have come yeah. into the apartment? Yeah. And him, there. And I, I recognize that. I'm like, oh my gosh, he wanted to kill my son too. Yeah, yeah, wow. Yeah. Wow. Uh, but did I go back to God? No. Okay. <laughs> um, no, because then just more chaos, more trauma, more, you know, all kinds of different things going on. Uh -huh. And um, it wasn't until my son was called, he called to tell me he was being shipped to Iraq, that he was going. Okay. And I began the, the process of, no, uh -huh. that's my only son, that's my only child, and da -da -da -da, just go, 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 go. Still not with God, but I'm calling out to him, calling out to him, calling out to him. Uh -huh. And that's when I heard him again. Okay. And he's because I'm such a person who's black or white, I'm in or out, there's uh -huh. no middle ground with me. Uh -huh. That he, he spoke to me, and he will speak to you in the way you speak. Yes, yes, he will. Every, everyone's like, I don't hear him that way. I'm like, because he speaks to you the way you speak. Yeah. And he said to me, I am not a God of compromise. You either come fully to me or not at all. Yes, amen. And that got my attention. I turned off the radio, and I'm like, I'm only in a two-seater car going, what male voice was that? So what, what, what year was this? Um, so probably about 14 years ago. Okay, all right. Yeah, and, uh, and uh, I was so um, frightened, like the fear of God came on me, uh -huh. that I started punching my radio dial and Mercy Me's Imagine came on. I can only imagine. I can only imagine. And I'm hearing the words, and you know, I can only imagine. And I start, I'm going to hell. I'm going to hell because I can't imagine seeing Jesus with the choices I've made in my life. Uh -huh. I can't imagine dancing before him. I can't imagine yeah. any of that. And and I broke down. I broke okay. down. I was on my way to work. I broke down. Uh -huh. And going, I cannot live my life like this. Yeah. yeah. I want to see Jesus. Yeah. And that started the process okay. of... Um, finding out who he is what he you know he was so gentle and so kind uh -huh. and um, then in the process of learning the different places that he put me in about what inner vows are mm -hmm. what honoring fa and father is and how so it'll go well with you in the land that I'm giving you yeah if I'm not honoring regardless of what they did it's not going to go well with me right uh, how you break those inner vows which are like covenants and agreements yeah. that are against his truth yes and started learning all of that and in the process in a hotel room i got delivered wow yeah wow. Awesome. i was on a business trip in a in a hotel room and uh -huh. bam 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 i didn't know what it was uh -huh. all i know is that i was spiritually vomiting and, and it went on and on and on and on and, and unfortunately I have drank enough to have dry heaves so uh -huh. I, it got to the point where I was like dry heaving spiritually and thinking uh -huh. this is never going to end wow. wow never and finally it did and when I fell back onto the, 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 the bed and the pillow I laid back and I'm like what is this I have never felt so clean wow what is this what is this peace yeah and I'm like, please never take me from here. Please never take me from here. I want to feel. I want to feel like this all my life. Yes, amen. All my life, and then it was even more and more in learning about who He is and truth. Uh -huh. Until one day, I go to Edie Bears, who was hosting a monthly, a monthly meetings at her, of her and her husband's home. Uh -huh. And I wanted to go, wanted to go, but there was always something that happened. But on this day, I'm like, I am going. And I don't think she even said you were gonna that there was gonna be a guest there. Okay. I don't even remember anything about a guest, but there was a guest, and you were that guest. Wow. Yes. Yes, and that would have been I think it was 2017. Yes. 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 Yeah. yeah. And you were speaking, and I'm like, who is this man? How does he know what happened to my life? You know, <laughs> just with the things that you were talking about. Yes. I'm like, 
Where were you? Why did I have to go through all, where have you been? Uh -huh. Yes, <laughs> yes. And then at the time, um, I was uh, working with Journey U Ministries, which you're going to be there yep, tonight. tonight. So yep. please come. If you're in the Houston area, please come 7 p.m. tonight at Journey U Amen. Ministries. And um, I told the Laura Bradshaw, who's the, the overseer of uh -huh. the ministry, I was at this place last night, and you're going to have to read this. I think I read your book in one day. Okay. Wow. And she goes, get us those books. Uh -huh. And I co contacted you. asked Edie, can... can you ask or may I get in touch with this Nelson guy we, uh -huh. I need to get some books uh -huh. and you said yeah you go over there I've got books at her house and I bought uh, I think mid all of them uh -huh. <laughs> and uh, now it's required reading at yes. that ministry for anyone who wants to be a prayer minister there and, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah 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 it's amazing how God has just continued to grow this from nothing <laughs> I say I'm a kid from a cornfield but um, literally I, I am but the Lord gave me a prophetic word back in 2009 that I would be in charge of this ministry that would infect, affect people around the world and I'm like what what kind of I can't do that I'm like I'm a business guy and then uh, eventually it was in 2015 that I started the ministry and then it started to grow and then it just kept growing and kept growing and it's still growing and growing and it's like it's uh, so many lives now that are being uh, because it's it's amazing when you when you think about Jezebel, Leviathan, and Ahab, how probably 85% of marriages are that, where you have one person that's more the person that wants to control and dominate and more pride, marrying someone that's more gentle in nature, and they come together. And, uh, and it's, because, it's because of the soul wounds in our past. And uh, if, you're, if you're a woman and you get hurt by, rejected by a father, or you have been sexually touched and stuff, that's how the spirit enters through that pain. And then until we get that healed by Jesus and then command the demons to go, they'll, they'll go up here and get 50,000 thoughts a day, of which 80% are negative, 95% are repetitive, and, and it doesn't end. And we have stress and striving and fighting and arguing and never can take the ownership for ourselves and what we do. We want to blame everything on the spouse and, and you have hell and you have divorce. <laughs> so. Well, and that's exactly because that's, you didn't, from what I saw in in my mother and father's marriage, in my grandparents' marriage, there was no taking responsibility. No one saying, I'm sorry. Mm. No, it, it, it was like constant bickering. Yeah. Uh, you know, little things that could flare up an individual mm -hmm. and things like that. Um, then in walks my husband, Jerry Rain. Mm -hmm. um, because of what had happened in my first marriage, I'm like, I'm not getting married. Yeah. yeah. This, apparently, this is marriage. Yeah. And, and and what I thought at the beginning. So again, I even so I had divorced my first husband. I had I had to. I just really thought that he, one of us were going to kill the other. Yeah. It, it was that bad. Yeah. yeah. And um, so I meet my husband, and he wants to marry me from the get go. Wow. I said no. Uh huh. <laughs> mm -mm, not going to happen. Uh -huh. And we were together for 23 years. Wow. 23 years wow. before we got married. Really? Yes. Wow. Wow. Yeah. And so we just recently celebrated 11 years of awesome. marriage. Awesome. But um, in that, where I was getting the healing. But he, you know, yeah, he will tell you she was not a nice person. He's so laid back. Uh -huh. He's so laid back. Uh, but I think too much laid back where he was like, just let her be, you know, yeah. she goes and I'm just not going to rock the boat there. Yeah, yeah. Um, so he has seen the ugly side of me, mm -hmm. uh, but now he gets to see the sweet side of yes. me. Yes. And I was um, talking about beauty and the beast, how the beast was that way because, you know, there was a spell, whatever cast out, but that's symbolic of how a lot of people are is until they have a person that can come along and love them unconditionally and be there. For them, you know, then uh, that person still has anger and hatred and bitterness, and so that person can love them through all that, and then they can turn into the beauty yeah. or the prince. You know, yeah, so. I remember one day he had told me, "I'm gonna break that wall that's around you." Now, I'm like, what? He just, "I'm gonna break that wall that's around you." Yeah. You can't be behind that wall anymore. Yeah. And so. Um, 
when I, again, in the car and all the things that were happening, got the phone call from my son, you know, he's going to Iraq and everything. Um, and then the change, that was a little hard for him too. Because now all of a sudden I wasn't who I was, so he didn't know how to, what's going on? Who are yeah. you? Yeah. There's a whole different side of me came out and, uh -huh. um, and the enemy using him and going, no, we used to go drinking together. No, we used to go, you know, do things together. No, mm -hmm. you know, I don't, what, I, what is this? <laughs> what is this? Who are you? Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. And I, and I had a lot of medical issues. Okay. A lot of medical issues. Mm -hmm. And, um, but as I was getting delivered, they were going. Yeah. They were leaving. Amen. Everything was leaving. Yeah. And I told my husband, I said, you want me with all those issues? Uh -huh. You know, I couldn't sleep. Uh -huh. I had, I could not sleep. Mm. I, I had uh, female issues. I had um, uh, uh, night sweats. Um, all kinds of different. Delivered from it all. Wow. wow. Delivered from it all. And uh, so now my husband gets his golf buddies and say, hey, my wife will pray for you. Yeah. Hey, call my wife. She'll pray for you. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and now I do ministry in my house. So he gets to uh, see things going on and yes. like, that's cool. Yes. That's pretty cool. Yeah. 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 So. yeah. I got to know Jerry the last couple of years and he's just an awesome guy and he's funny, you know, great sense of humor and makes me laugh and crack up and and I can talk to him about all kinds of crazy stuff that happened with people and their demons. And he's just like, okay, <laughs> he's like, interesting. Oh my gosh, only you, Nelson. I'm like, yep, yeah. only me. Yeah. <laughs> but there's a whole bunch of other people out there that have to deal with this stuff too. So, um, but yeah, it's neat that you are now passing this on, helping other people get past their pains. Yes. Past their soul wounds. Because yeah. if they don't get their soul wounds healed, then it's really hard to get the demons to leave because they have the legal right to torment them when they still have anger and bitterness and. And, uh, pride issues. Pride, yes. The, the mother of it all, pride issues. Yep. And, uh, yeah, so you started putting names to things, mm -hmm. which is what I need. I'm like, well, what is that? What, you know, what is that? I don't know. And then you started, there were names, and then you, you said in the Bible. And I'm like, okay. So he's, these names are associated in the Bible. Now I need to study the word more and then go in from that. And so now, because when you know the enemy's name, mm -hmm. then you're like, I know who you are. Yes. Oh, let's go. Like how many times did you go to church that they ever preached about Leviathan? No, none. <laughs> I mean, I never even heard of the word until 2015. You just need to be good. Like, just be good. Yes, I'm just, trying just to. Just do the word. Just be the word. Just be good. Okay, I'm trying to. I'm trying just to, be good. but I can't. <laughs> you know, and then for us in, in Catholics, you, you had to go to the priest for confession every week. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know... All right, go say uh, 10 Hail Marys and 10 Our Fathers and uh, your, I give you pen, your repent, your repentance. That sounds a little religious. How come I was coming <laughs> back the next week saying the same thing? I hit yes. my brother, I sassed to my mom, uh -huh. you know, and all this other stuff. Okay, 10 more Hail Marys and then, like, there was nothing, nothing in nothing here that's a it. Look, kid, you need to be delivered. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Just be good. Yes. Just be good. Just I'm like be trying it. to. I'm trying to, but I can't stop the thoughts up here from telling me to hit my brother and mm -hmm. hit my sister. Yeah. In fact, um, there was a, a girl, a woman that got delivered, her and her husband from Birmingham that I just interviewed. Yes. And she just shared today on Facebook that um, since they both got set free and delivered, you know, they have a brand new marriage, loving each other now. The kids are two, four, and six are like looking at them like. Oh my gosh, they like each other. They're holding hands. They're kissing in front of us. First time ever. And they said that now their six year old daughter um, uh, the other day was apparently getting a thought from the enemy telling her to hit her sister. Yeah. And she said, Mommy, Mommy, the enemy told me to hit my sister, but I didn't do it. <laughs> and I told the enemy to shut his mouth, you know, in Jesus' name. Praise God, we need to raise I'm those like, kitties. Ah, oh, they're discerning it at such a young age. It's yes. like, why didn't the church teach us this? when we were growing up in Sunday school. <laughs> yes, train up a child in the way that he should go. Yeah, yeah. You know, and we don't get that. You know, mo most people don't get that. And, yeah. um, and that's unfortunate because yeah. that's how those generational curses come in. 
Mm -hmm. it, it just moves to the next, to the next. Yeah, to we the next. infect our own children by the same demons that are tormenting us. And we're we, just, yeah, we're just calling. That's the way we are. That's our family line. That's yes. that's who you know, blah blah blah. And that's a lie from hell. Yes, it's it a lie. That's not who we were created to be. Yes. The word says that He knew us before He formed us in our mother's womb. Amen. That means we had a holy relationship with Him. That we were looking face to face with our Creator God. Yes. And when He put us there in our in the womb, He said, "I intricately made your parts." Yes. I am it, and that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Well, if that's not being reestablished by your parents, right? Hey, Nelson, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Yeah. You know, you're created to do great like things. I am? Really? Yeah. Okay. I want to yeah. be that. I want to hey, be that. Hey, that was a failure. That you know, we learn from our failures. Not ah. Uh, you needed to. You, you did another stupid move. Yeah. Yeah. You're worthless. Yeah. You're a piece of crap. <laughs> yeah. And that our mouths aren't speaking the blessings that we were commanded to speak. Yes. Commanded to to speak. And then I see in the scientific things that people say your DNA begins to change. Mm. When curses start are spoken into you, yes. your DNA begins to change. Yes, it does. Yeah. Like they, they did a study on, uh, what was it, rice. That, uh, in fact, it was on Facebook I talked about this, where they had rice and they put it in these containers. And then those that they spoke, you are worthless, you are deaf, you are dead. You know, and then they spoke life to another one, and the other one they didn't speak anything to. And they said that the one that they spoke death to had mold and all kinds of yeah. corrupt stuff on it. It was disgusting. The one that they didn't do anything to was also starting to turn and be yucky. But the one that they spoke life to, you could eat the rice. It was still healthy. It was yeah. white. Yes. It's like, oh my gosh, words, they do have a power. Because when God created this beautiful planet, he spoke it into existence. Yes, yes. absolutely. And so we, we then, when we get healthy, but our kids are a little bit older, it's very hard for them to trust us. Mm -hmm. And we have to yes. not take an offense to it. Right. Can't you see I've changed? Yes. Well, how many years did you, were yes. you a tormentor in their lives Absolutely. that you think it's gonna just switch overnight, right. that the trust issues and yes. the words that you spoke over your kids, like I'm still hurting from, you know, a year ago when you called yes. me a name and or you know whatever it is and yep. you've got to be so filled with grace as you're earning your trust back yes. with your kids yes amen even when they're older yes. you have to show grace it's not about them it's about you yes and so you know and and all you do is you come back i love you i hate you you still I know what I did was wrong. You take ownership yes. for what you did. Amen. You take it yes. and then begin the process of reconciliation, begin the process of renewing your relationship with your children. Yes. And even if they don't, you ask God to bless them anyway. Absolutely. Because it says bless your enemies. Mm -hmm. And um, and then you just... And, and Malachi 4, 5, and 6, the Lord kept telling me that when I was getting ready to start the ministry and then throughout the first couple of years and I'm like what does that have to do with me and I'm sending Elijah before the great and terrible day of the Lord to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and children to the fathers he said that's exactly what the ministry is doing you're getting the adults set free so that they can apologize to the children that yes. they've infected with pain and then when the children over time see that the parent has truly owned it and they can say they're sorry, then it opens up their hearts back to their parents. Amen. And then it brings the family unit together yes. again. So, yes, yay. yes, <laughs> Absolutely, so beautiful, yes. yes. So you are now like helping people, you are passing this on, you are mentoring people, you are helping them get set free and yes. delivered. Yes, and it's beautiful to watch. You, and you've had many occasions where you see where the face, you know, it, it's hard the or there's some, the continents. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, as you're going through the process, there's this thing that happens with your face yes. and and it's beautiful because you're watching it but you need to keep focused you know because you are like Ooh, yes yeah you know and uh, it, it's wonderful and then I'm getting callbacks where they're going uh, I'm now walking with my small child and and getting them set free hey let's handle it this way let's go to Jesus they're, they're applying what we teach yes. in inner healing and they're doing it with their kids, and now their kids are coming yes. and saying stuff. So yeah, it's yes. beautiful to see the cycle move forward. Right, mm -hmm. so what the enemy meant for evil to hurt us with, as we grow up and we get 
to become adults and we're adulting when we get healed when we forgive and get our soul wounds healed so we don't get triggered anymore and then we command the demons to go once we've taken care of the soul wounds being healed we ask Jesus to come to heal and we hear Jesus speak we get healed command the demons to go then we become a different person we yeah. don't strive we don't get yeah. triggered we don't go off on someone for hours we're a loving person and we have a lot of love and patience and then at that point we can help others and then teach them the same thing and then before you know it we're truly getting this church pure and spotless before Christ comes praise back. Praise God. Yes. Praise God. We're not having to be fake Christians no. and act like you go to church, I'm all happy, everything's fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. And then you get in the car and you hate each other again. Yeah. 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 That's dishonoring. That's dishonoring to each other. It's dishonoring to God. Yeah. That it, yeah. And I'm telling you, God is looking for honor to be restored in the relationships because we were all created by God him yeah and so when we dishonor each other we dishonor him amen and amen. he wants that stopped I remember one time <laughs> my mouth got I don't know what it was but my husband said something and I stepped mm -hmm. and I said something and I'm going to my car because I needed to leave I was just being a little hurrying mm -hmm. and man did he say something to me he says you don't speak to him that way Wow. I'm like yes sir stop it mm. yes sir mm -hmm. because I wasn't being honoring even though I'm here you know like I am right now it was just something where I, I guess I was in a hurry or so I don't even know but I I spat mm -hmm. the way I, I did it wasn't honoring boy but he came on I got in that car like what is who does he think he is you know kind of yes. thing and yes. I was like, you don't talk to him like that and I always say the enemy is the enemy so the enemy always tries to get us to say something and if we don't get the wounds healed from the past, we still have the demons that will keep tormenting us and it will cause us to be blinded to our own stuff. We won't own it and then we won't say, I'm sorry for anything. And then we, it's all their fault and they have to apologize. And then they apologize for something they really shouldn't have had to apologize for. And it's us that need to be the one that has to apologize. Yes. And yes. so I came, I came back after where I had to be and come back. And I, and I went to him and I said, I didn't text him because I think, you know, Unless you were going somewhere on a long thing. But I went back to him and I came real close and I said, I'm sorry I talked to you that way. That was very rude and inconsiderate of me. And I asked for your apology. You know, I apologize. Mm -hmm. And I uh, asked for your forgiveness. And I asked for your forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And he said, I forgive you. Yeah. That wouldn't have been me in the past. Like, you could stew in that. <laughs> you know? Yes. And that's what ruins so many relationships. Is like, well, I'm going to take an offense, and, and it's your problem, so I'm going to treat you really badly. And the person's like, what? I didn't do really anything that was deserving of this. And then they're, the, the, the enemy is telling you that, well, don't talk to them. They have to apologize. And then they're like, they don't even know it because real, real yeah. realization they didn't need to apologize we are the ones that need to apologize exactly. for what we did and the enemy's like got us so prideful that oh no i'm going to not talk to them for a long time and then eventually they could go into where you're there's a separation there's a divorce all based on stupidity yeah all based on what the enemy's telling you to do and to be offense take an offense and pride and it ruins relationships yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, the moment you open your mouth and insert foot, you've come into agreement with the lies of the enemy yeah. immediately. And so now there's a lot. I've you know, I've come in and I remember I was on a prayer call and a woman, this is, okay, so this is like, I'm on it, hello, you know, prayer call, da, da, da. You need to be nice to me. You wow. need to you need to be uh, kind and considerate and care and this this thing rose up you know like the, I need to go into defense mode I'm, uh -huh. I'm, I'm gonna put this woman on shutdown uh -huh. and she's like going on like that and the, and the Lord is like zip it okay and she's just going on and on and on and then he was just he said ask her what her um, relationship with her dad was uh -huh. and it was they always give that that uh, you know, uh -huh. do we have to go there? Uh -huh. And she had said something else, and I said, "What well, you're saying that you, you don't hear from God, so God represents our spiritual father. Yeah. And if there is an issue, a disconnect with communicating with him, yeah, something happened. Yeah. With your dad, what was that? Yeah. 
Well, he traveled a lot. There's a lot of bugs, little bugs. <laughs> Shoot fly. Shoot fly. Bother me. <laughs> and, um, and we got to get her healed from going back. Her dad wasn't there. When he was there, he didn't want to be bothered. Okay. And she always felt like she had to work for his love and attention. She had to earn it. Mm -hmm. and, and that she didn't have a boy, so it was like... Yeah. And so um, it was so good to walk her through a father's the wounding of the father to the healing of the father. Yes, amen. And her voice changed. She said, thank you so much for being kind to me. Wow. Yeah. She says, because normally people hang up mm -hmm. or uh, people that I talk to in like friendships and stuff shut me down. Yes. Hurting people hurt people. Yeah. Yeah. And I thought that was a victory. Yeah. Right. If I, if out of the 21 calls that I took today, that one right there was the one why I showed up today. Yes. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, I know I've endured some things in relationships um, and, and stepchildren that I had to bite my tongue and bite my tongue and bite my tongue and bite my tongue. And it's like, this is not fun, Lord. This is not fun. I don't like <laughs> being yelled, abused. And I always tell people, you know, it's, it's not healthy to be in an abusive relationship. There are times that are appropriate that if the person cannot control themselves is you need to part, you need to separate in order to have peace. Because yeah. otherwise they will, that demon will provoke you and provoke you and provoke you to lose it and to say something you shouldn't that you normally wouldn't. Yeah. And then they will blame you <laughs> for it when you do it and not even see what they've did for hours uh, to provoke. But that's why it's healthy sometimes to get away and let the person look in the mirror at themselves and say, listen, man, this is you and God now. Let him speak to you and deal with you. Yes. So I can be in peace and not have, because if, if, if anyone's in a relationship where that person's going off on them all the time, it's gonna hurt the person that's having to endure it. You know, you can't endure it forever. No. They need to get healed from yeah. that, so, yeah. 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 Absolutely. Well, awesome. So, are you going to the rodeo in the next three weeks? You know, I haven't been to the rodeo in probably 12 years. Okay. In about 12 years, it's, it's just uh, challenging to get there. So they might have changed it now. They, they may have some competitions where they take footballs and they try to throw it on the, and the people on the horses trying to catch it. That would be cool. Cowboy football. <laughs> cowboy football. <laughs> yes. Like, you mean like cowboys football, like Dallas Cowboys football? Yes. <laughs> yes. Except they're on horses. That would be so much cooler. <laughs> it would be cooler. <laughs> That would be good. <laughs> a little dangerous, but that's okay. <laughs> the cowboys, you're used to rough, tough stuff. They're rough stuff. and tough guys, man. I would, yeah, I wouldn't want that job. <laughs> <laughs> well, awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing and encouraging. In fact, why don't you end with an encouraging word for people right now that are struggling in their relationships? I did. Uh, the Lord um, this morning said that there are a lot of you who are so bound up by fear. And... Um, that his word says perfect love casts out all fear okay Amen. perfect love that's his love casting out all fear so right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ I ask you father to release your perfect love that it saturate them marinate them and overtake them to the very core of their being that you have an encounter with them that will so flip their world that th the hurts of the past that cause the fear, the hurts of imperfect love that has been contaminated would now just switch over to knowing what pure love is. You are loved beyond all measure that you could ever know you are loved. And just lift your hands up and say, I receive your perfect love. Yes. Because he wants to give it to you. It's been there. Now receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All righty, guys. Well, have a great weekend, and we will see you on Facebook. Go Texas! Yay! <laughs>